everyone. So today we're going to discuss very, very briefly, because there's actually not a whole lot I want to talk about, but there are some key moments in this episode that I definitely don't want to wait on talking about. So, <sighs> maths, maths, maths. All right. So, Here's what I'm going to say. There's really nothing to discuss when it comes to Rebecca and Austin. They're great. It's fine. Claire and... Actually, I'm not going to talk about Claire yet. I'm going to talk about... Um, oh, names aren't coming to me, but... Uh, is it, I want to say Paige, but I don't think that's her name. Blonde girl and her man... Her man's, um, I really have nothing to really discuss about them as a couple. They seem pretty okay on the same page and everything, but I do want to talk about the hair situation. Now, I know she can't use her, I guess, her dominant hand because she has sprained her hand falling, I think, while showering or before or after. And I don't, I understand that, but I'm so confused by how someone's hair gets that knotted that quickly. Now, coming from a black girl who hair can definitely lock if not brushed properly, um... But you can still get a brush through it to some extent. It might take some time, but you can. And it can take weeks for it to get to the state of which the, her hair was at. And her hair managed to get there in a matter of days. And I'm so confused. I mean, so confused. I feel bad for her that she had to have some of her hair cut off, but at least her hair looks somewhat normal afterwards. Like, it doesn't look, like, too bad. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, there are so many solutions in order to prevent your hair from ending up like that. You can use your non-dominant hand. I've had to do it. It's not easy, but at least you're doing something. Or... Can't her husband help with the brushing of the hair so that her hair doesn't end up in that state? Like, I'm just confused, like, what's happening here? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's really the only thing I want to discuss about them. Um, okay, so now Claire and Cameron... They seem to be doing pretty okay, actually. They seem to kind of realize that having some fun with each other and, you know, connecting on that level really seems to help with progressing their relationship. They're starting to have a little more physical touch and she's starting to realize that they're having more physical touch. So that's great. Things seem to be going in the right direction. I do think there's still awkwardness between them. I'm not sure if they're going to work. I still am on the side of no, but I guess we'll see. But I'm just like, okay, I can see that there's effort being made on both parts. The one thing I want to talk about, though, very quickly, because not a whole lot I can talk about here, is... The fact that when they were in the van going to the boat, but it was raining, and he went to the other seat, and she's like, why'd you move, why'd you move? And he's like, well, I just kind of want to stretch my legs out. And she's like, well, you can take your legs that way, like, why'd you move? And he's, like, demonstrating if he did, like, he'd be, like, on her and stuff like that. He didn't want to assume. And she's like, it's fine. He's weird as axed. You would have asked that she's actually getting pretty upset that he moves seats. And I'm like, okay, okay, calm down. It's not a big deal. 
he thought he was doing something nice or being thoughtful. You don't have to snap his head off because of it. Just say it's okay. You know that for next time and all is fine. It's okay. Like I feel like she gets very, I don't know, like the one thing I do want to say about her is when they're doing the group, the women and the men group together and talking about their experiences, and she kind of says, you know, I look at you guys and I feel like, oh, maybe it's weird that we don't have a lot of physicality with each other and, you know, all that, even though like in previous relationships, she wasn't really physical to that extent with people, but she sees other people doing, it's like, okay, I understand that maybe it feels weird because everyone else around you is being physical with each other, but you can't look on what other people are doing. You got to focus on your relationship and where your relationship is at. If you're comparing yourself to other people's relationships, you're going to go nowhere and it's just going to, it's not going to work. Everyone's, everyone's different. And when I kind of heard that, I'm like, okay, so you just want to follow fashion then? Is that what's happening? Or what? <laughs> you know? So I do, I do find like, she's very big on how she looks maybe to other people or how they look to other people, especially to the other couples. So the fact that he made that move over to the other seat kind of shows that they're not in, in a comfortable spot in the same way that everyone else is. And that's going to be noticed by the others. And it's like, okay, but who really gives a shit? But anyway, I don't have much more to say on them. So let's go to, uh, what's her name? Laura, Laura, and Orion. So they do kind of discuss the situation that happened with the, um, uncomfortable conversation that they had the day prior and they seem to kind of get on the same page where that is concerned and are choosing to just move forward but then we get to the last scene of the episode which is with them and we're talking about, you know, what things you might be comfortable with in terms of bringing sex toys into your sex life and all of that. Like, where is, where are we all at here? And they're kind of talking like that. And he mentions that, you know, he kind of had this, I don't want to say necessarily expectation, but this thought of, oh yeah, you know, maybe, you know, he could have sex with his wife or whatever, but kind of understanding that that might not be the main focus for some time. And, and, but, and then he mentions that I haven't had sex in quite some time. He says about a year and a half, a little over a year and a half that he hasn't had sex with someone. And she says, okay, well, it hasn't been as long as that for me. And she mentions two months, that it has been two months from, she says pretty much probably from today. It's been about two months since she's had sex with someone. And he, she says, like, how does that kind of make you feel? And he says, to be honest, I kind of take sex off the table for me. And she's like, okay, so I guess we will not be having sex, I guess. And it's kind of where it, it ends. But here, here's what I'm going to say. She, as we know, mentions that she hasn't, she's had sex two months prior. And he kind of makes mention of, you know, this process was ongoing two months ago for all of us and 
he he says like you know once i was told that i was matched with somebody then i took that serious and she says well this happened before that which is true it did happen but it would have only happened a month or so before right so i guess for him he's saying this process was happening and you still had sex with somebody else you know we've had this happen many times she's not the first she probably will not be the last so here's what i'm gonna say i do understand from one perspective of you're doing this because you want to be married and you maybe certain people make the choice of not having sex during this process but then there's the other end of it too where it's like okay you don't know if you're going to get picked. Out of everyone who applies, only 10 people are chosen, right? So it's it's like, okay, do you put your life on hold? Do you put your human needs on hold for something that may not happen? You may not be one of those 10. So there's 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 that aspect of it. And there is, I, I don't know what I would do personally. Then again, if I'm single and I don't have that, you know, temptation or whatever, I probably could do that. But at the same time, it's like, okay, but I'm still single. You haven't matched me with anybody. I'm still a single person with needs. What I do prior to that to your existence in whatever shape or form that is it doesn't matter what I do so it's kind of a similar situation but because this is a different situation this is a process that goes on for some time I don't know what you would do in, in that situation I don't know but there's the other end of it too his comment of I think sex is off the table now. That feels very shamey. That's not a word, but today it is. It feels very like he's shaming her, like, and maybe even slut shaming her, and basically saying, like, you're now, I don't know gross or tarnished or something i don't know and now i don't want to have sex with you because you've had sex with somebody else so i don't it's this is a tough one because i just think like on one hand she's allowed to do what she wants to do and not be they feel any shame for that but on the other hand i understand him when i'm just like but we've been in this process so why are you sleeping with somebody else but i will say point blank i don't agree with his approach of i think sex is off the table i think if you can communicate and figure out some sort of solution or something if it's about like the medical aspect of someone being intimate with somebody else then that's something that you guys can discuss do you want her to do an std test whatever fine i still think that's gross because trust her and her judgment but again you can't always do that sometimes you need to protect yourself and that's fine but it's just like, there's so many ways around this that it doesn't, have some, it doesn't have to come to that. However, if he's kind of taken this approach of, I now think you're gross because of your decision, then that's something that I don't think they can get out of. I really don't. Just because he has chosen to be in a sense, abstinent now for the last year and a half. That's his decision. I don't know the circumstances. 
if that's just how it turned out, if that was a purposeful choice of his, I don't know. But everyone has their path. And if her path is to have sex with somebody two months prior, then so be it. If your path is to not have sex with anyone for the last year and a half, then so be it. But don't judge each other for it. You're, you're, you're supposed to be a married couple. Sex off the table for any couple. Any mother married or not. Sex off the table is a deal breaker, I think, for most people. So I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. I'm curious to know what you all think, actually, on this one. Because... I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But definitely, if you have any thoughts on all of this, sound off in the comments, of whatever, reach out on social media, which makes me into this perfect segue, because that's all I have on Married at First Sight this week. And as always... You can reach out to us by going to other Facebook at Reality T Times Two, Instagram and Threads at Reality T Times Two Podcast, uh, Twitter at Reality T Times Two Pod, Reddit same thing Reality T Times Two Pod, and you can also email us at Reality T Times Two at Hotmail dot com. And we also have a website, and uh, that is solo.to forward slash reality t times two. So yes, for sure, guys, reach out to me. I'm so curious to know what you think about the situation between Laura and Orion. But that is it for now for Meredith Sight for this week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you.